Okay, so first of all, we need to go to the Flourish website. And then you need to create a free account. Then we'll go to New Visualization. And scroll down and select US Hex States. Now this is the template that they give you. So first of all, we need to go to the data tab and load in our own data. I am going to take this data in Excel and copy it and then paste it back into Flourish. Then we need to tell it what columns have what data in them. So geometry has to stay in column A because that is where all of the shapes are. And then I'm going to change the name to column E and then the label to column F and the value to G. Then we'll go back to the preview tab. And you'll see that things have changed now, but they look a little bit off. And that is because my states are ordered in a different way. So here, for example, they have Alabama first, but I have Alaska first. So we need to go back to Excel and then change the order of these so that they are in alphabetical order by state name. Then I will copy all of this again and paste it over the top. And now things look a little bit better, but there is still a problem because they here have District of Columbia, but I am calling mine Washington DC, so it's in a different order. I'm going to copy this cell and go back to Excel and then paste District of Columbia in here. And then we will reorder the states. And we will copy this and then paste it again. And now we have District of Columbia in the correct place. Now, if we go back to the preview tab, we are almost there, but there is still one more problem because Flourish assumes I have data for Puerto Rico, which I do not have. So we need to scroll down here and where we have Puerto Rico, I am going to cut all of this and then paste it one row down. So now I have blank cells for Puerto Rico and everything else is lined up. Now we have the data sorted out, we can start going through the settings. So we'll go to the regions layer. And here I can change the outline. So we have a black outline. And then here is where we change the color scales. So I can have a categorical scale. This isn't going to work with the data that I currently have. But if I go back to data, I can change the value column to I as column I has actual categories in it. And now I have something that looks more reasonable then we can custom override the colors. So I will make R colon red and D colon blue. And once I click out of this, the colors will change. Then we can also have a numeric scale. And so now I will have to change my data back to column G. And then we have different options for the colors and we can also choose a custom color. Then we can have a diverging scale type. And with this, you also get different color options and you can also customize it. Then we have the option between linear and binned. And binning is what I want. So I'm gonna change the binning mode to custom thresholds. And then if I hover over the question mark here, you can see that we have to put our thresholds with semicolons in between. Then I'll change the palette back to red, blue. Then we can also choose what happens to the missing values. So I'll change this to hide region. And then Puerto Rico disappears. Then we can also choose the number styling. 
So if I hover over one of these states, it will show me the number for that state, which is 61. But all of my numbers are percent. So I'm going to put the percent symbol as the suffix. Now when I hover over it, it has changed to 61. Then we have the labels, and this is the state abbreviations. At the moment, they have a white outline, but I don't like this, so I'm going to change the outline width to zero. Then I will make the font a little bit bigger. Then we will go to pop-ups and panels. And the pop-up is the thing that pops up when you hover over one of these states. So I am going to customize this. And I can change the header. And if you hover over the question mark, you can see the values that you need to put in. So I will click on the little paintbrush and then delete all of this. Then type Democrat colon. And then I'll click on this here. And so then it will show me the actual number. Then we'll do a line break. And on the next line, I will put Republican and colon. Then I'll just copy this bit. And this here needs to be the name of the column heading. So it knows which column you want it to show the data from. So mine is called Republican Vote 2020. Then we'll go back to settings. But at the moment, there's a problem with this because it won't show me the Republican number. And that is because I need to go to data. And then in the metadata for pop-ups, I need to add in column H. Because that is the column with all of the Republican numbers in it. Then we'll go back to preview and now we can see the Republican number. We can also change the style for the pop-ups. So I will change the header to be header block and the radius, which is like the rounded corners, I will make that zero. And now the pop-up looks like this. Then we have the search box here, which is this here, which will allow me to search for a particular state. I don't want this, so I'm going to remove it. Then we have the legend. So I'm going to put this in the middle and make the font a bit bigger. Then I will make the width much wider. I'll increase the height of the colored bar a bit and then get rid of the rounded corners. Then change the legend minimum to zero and the maximum to 100 as I have percentages. Then we'll go to the layout. And here I can change the font. So you have a few different fonts to choose from. Then we'll go to the header tab and we can give this a title. And we can change the style of this title. So I will make the font bigger. And I will put a border underneath it and change this border to be white and make it a bit thicker. Then we can also add in a footer and that is the source at the bottom here. So I don't want to have multiple sources, I just want one. I'm going to call it data and then I'll paste in the hyperlink to where I got this data. And now we can change the size of this page. So I will customize the size to be 800 and 600. I will name this visualization tile grid map. And then if you want to export or publish this, you can click here. So if you wanted to download the image, you could download it as a PNG here. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you how to make a tile grid map in Flourish, and that is everything.